Warning, this video will touch on many sensitive subjects, such as SA and child endangerment. If hearing about these topics do not fit in with your healing journey, please feel free to click off. The contents of this video were sourced from screenshotted conversations, articles, court documents, and videos. Do not bully anybody as a result of watching this. This is for entertainment purposes only. It's about to get rough. How many individuals can truly rise from the ashes of a challenging childhood? A comprehensive study from the University of Michigan's panel study of income dynamics, which has followed about 18,000 individuals and their descendants since 1968, delves into this question. This study examines crucial aspects such as employment, income, health, marriage, and child development. The findings reveal that only about 16% of children raised in poverty will grow to become successful or at least consistently working adults by the ages of 25 to 30. This means a staggering 84% remain trapped in their disadvantaged positions. But out of those who manage to climb out of poverty, how many will go beyond mere success to become public figures advocating for systemic change? How many will recognize the flaws within the system, having experienced them firsthand, and strive to reform the very mechanisms that silence them as a child? And yet, how tragic is it when someone who has seen the system from the inside, who knows the changes that need to happen, ends up failing their own children in an even more spectacular way? In this video, we explore the compelling and saddening story of one such individual, someone who soared to great heights only to come crashing down, illustrating a poignant and powerful fall from grace. This is the story of Harold Sloke. Harold Rhodes Sloke, known online as Chad Master, Chad Flex, or RJ, was born April 2, 1990, near Anderson, South Carolina, to his parents, Roberta and Harold Sr. Roberta's father was also her grandfather, this means that Roberta was a product of parental incest. His parents were divorced in 1997, which caused Harold to live in two separate homes. The primary driving force of the divorce was his father having an interracial cuckold fetish being left by his mother for the bull. His time was essentially split between a rock and a hard place between living with his mother and stepfather or his biological father because there was physical abuse happening in both locations. Allegedly, also, there was CSA happening in both homes. However, there are conflicting reports saying both it did and did not happen. This combination of things leads up to him being placed in foster care in 2003. During his stint in foster care, he broke out of multiple foster homes, jumping around from foster family to foster family all over the place. He actually ended up in 12 different schools his freshman year. That would later influence his early career. However, the result of these multiple stressors, or maybe the cause of them, was Harold misbehaving, leading to multiple arrests, joining a gang, and a pattern of behavior that we will see follow him to this very day. Such as a hard time being truthful or taking responsibility for his actions, and not knowing if he is a white supremacist. Eventually, he does age out of the foster care system. After high school, he joined the Army Reserves as a 91B, or an all-wheel mechanic, for the National Guard. Through the Angels and Adoption program, he becomes a child care worker in the state of Missouri, after which he became an intern slash assistant for Senator Roy Blunt. At this point, he had a hand in developing the Uninterrupted Scholars Act, which allows education records to be disclosed to caseworkers and other child welfare agencies, in the case of a transfer from one school to another. Following his time as an intern, he works in various foster care homes and as a youth correctional officer, eventually becoming a motivational speaker for the Congressional Coalition for Adoption and various other speaking events advocating for Angels and Adoption, the foster care program that he used. During the course of this, he is married to a woman named Hillary, who gives birth to his first daughter in the summer of 2011. Then they go on to have a second daughter in 2016. However, in the next three years from this point, his life would take a dark and dramatic turn, largely due to his own petulant behavior, extremist ideologies, and extremist sexual practices. And we will backtrack on that in a minute, but it didn't stop the birth of his first son from happening in 2019. I'm actually going to read a uh, text exchange between him and his ex-wife Hillary right now. Uh, I think it's important that uh, you 
you see this so you can picture the kind of human that we are dealing with here. I'm telling you something that would make my life easier, and you dismiss it. I don't want to live like this. I hate my life. All of it. Then leave. Get out of our lives. You won't even let me get my gym time. You went alone last week. You went all weekend. You're a, fr a freaking... You're a C-word. You're a freaking... You're a freaking C-word. Alright, uh... So, in all transparency, everything's kind of about to get rough or insane at the same time. So, I'm going to try to keep my sense of humor about me as a coping mechanism for the amount of garbage that I had to sift through for this. As you could probably predict, he was such a stellar husband that their marriage lasted until 2019 when Hillary took the home and had sole custody of the kids. He had visitation rights, but had to pay roughly 25% of his income in child support every month. We are about to dig through another one of their text exchanges, but there's something that I want to point out. It's a pattern of behavior, like I said earlier. Um, so Harold kind of jumps back and forth in between being like the ultra, like, I'm so cool, you can't touch me bully figure, but also like the poor defenseless, ow, please stop, uh, type of type of person it's a very annoying you're gonna see it a lot um throughout this documentary he's a he's a slippery fella you're gonna you'll know you'll know it when you see it can you get the kids in the morning does noon work for a guy who keeps complaining about how he doesn't get his kids you don't seem to be jumping at the chance to take them but yeah sure f you a b word oh Ouch. My feels. The C word. He will go on to whine that he lost his cars, his home, his job, and his savings. However, despite making enough to have a hefty savings account, he never actually built one. But, let's step back and examine the years where his life direction changed. First, we need to examine Charlottesville, 2017, and his role in it. For those unaware, Charlottesville, Virginia was home of the Unite the Right rally, which was a big white supremacist meetup. The purpose of this rally was to unite the white nationalist movement and protest the proposed removal of the Robert E. Lee statue. The removal was proposed after Dylan Roof went into a black church and killed nine people in 2015. At this rally, protesters countered protesters and cops basically clashed, which resulted in 30 injured, uh, the city was put into a state of emergency, and the Virginia State Police declared the rally to be an unlawful assembly. One of the white supremacists, James Alex Fields Jr., ran his car through a crowd of counter-protesters, killing Heather Heyer and injuring 35 others. During this time, Harold was actually misidentified as James Alex Fields Jr. in one of the articles. Harold at the time was a self-proclaimed white nationalist and white purist, very against race mixing, per his own now-deleted Facebook post, and here is him assaulting somebody with an anti-KKK sign. Here is him meeting David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, after he got his head uh, hit with a rock or a trash can or a toaster or a stale subway sandwich i don't i don't know how it happened but it, he got injured he was of course like every uh super you know white <laughs> obsessed with a certain austrian painter his son is actually named after a neo-nazi terrorist who killed 77 people between a car bombing and a mass shooting anders bering brevik now, you will need that crucial bit of information that I just said a little bit later on. But first, let's fast forward back to 2019, where Harold makes like his own dad and leaves his children behind. In 2020, he pursues a new romantic interest with a woman named Patricia. Patricia is, at the time, living in Florida, then they move to Quincy, Illinois to an Airbnb along our heroic and totally sane main character. 
The physical abuse towards Patricia starts in April of 2021. She went through his phone, found out that he was cheating, and then when confronted, he went gorilla mode, I guess is the YouTube-friendly way to say that. The day after this event, or this beating, that is when she finds out that she is pregnant. This causes Patricia to develop a fear of leaving or being honest about the situation with herself or with others. This is also where Harold begins to self-inflict harm and threaten to last online five years ago himself. If you know, you know. This is when uh, he decided to force an open relationship. The day after the pregnancy was determined, he got actively involved in the swinger community. During her pregnancy, he sexualized her pregnancy and also forced her to give breast milk to his swinging partners. Harold would often threaten suicide or bodily harm if Patricia didn't want to participate in any of these activities. So this is becoming 2021, the timeline of events so far. In the latter part of the year 2021, he decided he wanted to compete as a powerlifter with his first competition in Waynesville, Missouri, where he actually comes in second out of two. What an athlete. According to top sources who used to pin him because it made him queasy and almost pass out, he would use somewhere between two and three grams of anabolic steroids per week on top of TRT. His recommended dosage was 100 milligrams per week. For context, an average dosage of a dirty athlete is around 150 to 200 milligrams of testosterone per week, meaning he was using 10 times the typical amount of steroids that famous athletes typically use, which they typically use them and then later speak out against them because of the long-term effects on mental and physical health. But it wasn't just testosterone alone. It was also trenbolone, D-ball, anadrol, equipose, and then Trimix and Cialis for erectile dysfunction. Here is a video of their son finding his trend bottles. So you may be wondering why I listed those last two things about erectile dysfunction. So as a quick aside, Trimix, if you don't know, is an injection for erectile dysfunction. And you may be asking yourself, where does it go? Where, where would you inject something like that, Andrew? Yeah, there, that's where you do it. He actually abused these ED drugs so much that he was hospitalized for Trimax abuse three times. And you may be asking yourself once again, what is that? What, what do you mean by that? What happened? Uh, well, basically the blood wouldn't come out of it. During this point in time, he did blame Patricia for his ED, saying that it was happening because he was cheating on her, and he blamed her for his feelings of guilt, which made his thing not thing. Patricia and Harold's son was born in the winter of 2021. After the birth, they moved to Missouri so he could see his first three children, and they adopted an emotional support cat for Patricia. Harold's second powerlifting competition is in March of 2022, where he is disqualified for missing all three attempts at bench press. Now, after making this move to Missouri, he was evicted three times. The first two times were in an apartment, and the last time was in a house. He used the Ryan White program to pay for one to two months of rent, and then stayed in a property for as long as he possibly could. Basically, he abused the program and essentially functioned as a squatter. His divorce with Hillary was still being battled in court at this time, so the marital home was still in his name. This enabled him to rent properties because landlords were more willing to rent to him since he was a homeowner despite his 380 credit score. After a short stay in Missouri, he left again, but not for long. He moved to Phoenix, Arizona to do van life by himself for a month. When he left, he gave Patricia $400 to live off of, despite her being a stay-at-home mom. He had the expectation, and outright said, that she would need to support herself via sex work while he was gone. However, she did not make enough on her own, because of her hesitancy to follow down that rabbit trail, 
and had to borrow thousands of dollars from her brother in order to pay for the moving cost to be in Arizona. While Harold is in Arizona, but Patricia has yet to arrive, that is when Harold starts to re-engage with certain white nationalists, and the threats of quote-unquote vibe-checking himself uh, start to increase. He starts sending her pictures with a blicky in his face hole, let's call it while using the white nationalists as a means of procuring steroids. For the first couple of months they were there, they were bouncing in between extended stay suites and Airbnbs until they found someone that would let them move into a house. His quote-unquote membership in the swinger community accelerated in early to mid-2022, which was highlighted by the furtherance of his cuckold fetish. He forced Patricia into the role of cuckoldry more actively, mainly with black men, and would threaten self-harm and assault if she tried to avoid it. There was nothing that would stop Harold from pursuing his sexual fantasies, including his children. When his kids were in his care, he would give them melatonin to go to sleep so he could engage in swinging. At this point, they were aged 3, 5, and 9. He would also beat his kids when he was frustrated his oldest daughter seemed to take the brunt of his abuse, while the younger two seemed to run and hide from him, especially when he was angry. Now, I know on the timeline I've been hopping back and forth a little bit. Uh, something else I wanted to touch on right now, because it seems relevant, is the cat Loki that was adopted for Patricia was actually another target of Harold's beatings. He would grab the cat, he would kick the cat, he would throw it. In the interim of him leaving... From Missouri to Arizona, she actually took the cat back to the shelter, basically because she did not feel safe with that cat around Harold. Realistically, it was the best solution for the cat. In 2023, he starts to pressure Patricia for a polyamorous sister-wife style relationship with a woman named Megan, who he is with now. At this time, Patricia was past her breaking point. He belittled her and made it out to seem that her desires in life were a problem for his image. She knew that she could no longer keep up with the abuse that bruised and destroyed her own morals and sense of self. She felt the person that she was ceased to exist and began making plans to leave. She was sick of Harold always putting sexual obsessions over his family. Remember how Harold was asking for a polyamorous relationship? Well, at this point, it was not a question anymore. Megan had moved in, and he had announced it on Facebook without telling Patricia about it. Patricia tried to use this to her advantage. She peacefully accepted this in hopes that it would keep him distracted. She was making phone calls to police stations and women's centers to find out what her rights were. Unfortunately, Harold found out about her plan in April 2023. He tried to steal her phone and brutally assaulted her. At this point, a neighbor called the police, got him arrested, Patricia filed a restraining order and left. She then moved back to her family's home in Florida and remained there until a scheduled court hearing to keep her restraining order against him active. Due to the fact that she didn't write all of the abuse in her initial restraining order, she wasn't able to maintain the order. It would only stay active if the incident that happened was less than a year old. Most of the incidents that Patricia did have documentation of were over a year old, so she had an uphill battle in court. I would like to take a moment and, and, you know, just address a pretty serious flaw with the court system, especially in the United States. About 75% of all domestic violence charges are dismissed, regardless of the accusing party, and sometimes regardless of the evidence. A dismissal is not a not guilty verdict. You will need to know this in a bit. With the restraining order now void, Harold used this opportunity to manipulate Patricia once again. He convinced her to stay in Arizona so that they could co-parent and threatened to file police reports against her for the prostitution that he forced her into. She stayed in Arizona for three months before moving back to Florida again, once back home in Florida. Well, I am about to play you a uh, voice message that was left by Harold on Patricia's mom's house phone, okay? Um, you may want to watch it twice, but I'll play it twice, and the sound will be amplified on the second video. Hey, Skip. Hey, this is Ralph Aries. This is Dad calling the 
check in on you. I uh, hope you're able to hear me. I love you very much, and I uh, hope I get to see you soon. I think about you all the time, and uh, I just wish I'd be able to talk to you and really see a picture. But uh, one, day to, one day I will, and uh, I love you very much. I think about you all the time. Bye. Wednesday, 10.23 p.m. Saturday, 6.02 p.m. 7. This call... Skip. Hey, it's uh, for Harry, his dad. Just calling to let you know that me and Megan, we love you so much. We miss you. We're going to get you back. And everybody, can't wait to see you. Sunday, 10.36 p.m. End of final phase. Skip. Hey, this is uh, for Aries. This is Dad calling to check in on you. I uh, hope you're able to hear me. I love you very much, and I uh, hope I get to see you soon. I think about you all the time, and uh, I just wish I'd be able to talk to you and we see a picture. But uh, one, day to, one day I will, and uh, I love you very much. I think about you all the time. Bye. Wednesday, 10.23 p.m. Saturday, 6.02 p.m. 7. This call... Skip. Hey, it's uh, for Harry, his dad. Just calling to let you know that me and Megan, we love you so much. We miss you. We're going to get you back. And everybody, can we see you? Sunday, 10.36 p.m. End of final... And you may be asking yourself, as you listen to that, is that... It is. It is exactly what you think it is. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, I guess let's get into what's going on currently. Uh, he's currently a quote-unquote public figure on X, where he is a power lifter, surprisingly. He is also currently running a fake harassment campaign where he and his girlfriend, Megan, who is a diaper enthusiast, are making fake TikToks and fake Facebook accounts of Patricia. And that is because to some people, punching and kicking and sex trafficking are not enough to do to someone. Sometimes you need to make their grandparents afraid to check their farmville. When all of this became public knowledge, Harold's powerlifting coach said, nuh -uh, I want nothing to do with you. And as a result of this, Harold lashed out, of course, at all of his teammates from powerlifting. You know how much you have to suck as a human that, like, a guy won't even teach you how to lift heavy things anymore? It's rough. It is rough out here for people that want to just punch their girlfriend a little sometimes as a treat. Here, uh, I guess it's time to read a, another one of these messages that Harold seems to think that he's the professor of logic with. Um... If I'm that much of a shitty person, it says a lot about you to not only associate with me, but mentor and be close friends with me. Oh, so you're not a shitty person then? Well, that's because I'm not that bad of a person either. But you can't speak up for the truth, or at least stay neutral, because you were just a hurt little boy yourself. You sit there and blab how you care about my kids, and so and so, and yet are supporting this disgusting video that talks about them. And right now, you're probably talking about, well, what video could he possibly be referring to? And you let, uh, listen, we'll get to that when we get to that. But back to Harold. What do you all at home believe that, hold on, wait, 
uh, editor, can you put some uh, Jeopardy music? You know, double Jeopardy, like na 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 na. Yeah, put that, put that right over what I'm about to say. What job do you think that Harold currently has? A. Women's self-defense teacher. B. A, a how a how to be a dad coach. I don't know if that's a job. Or C. A plumber. All right, I'm gonna give you some time to really consider this because I know that he seems pretty well qualified for the first two. Well, it was a trick because he's actually a trick, kinda. Uh, he he's a prostitute. Uh, decided to give up on having sex with strangers for free, and is now a, qu a quote-unquote OnlyFans model. You know. You know what he's doing. You know what he's doing on there. And you may be asking yourself, uh, or asking me even from behind the screen, you may be going, uh, Andrew, it is 2024. How is that problematic? You get to choose what you do with your own body. And I will tell you, and in order for me to tell you, let's take a walk down memory lane. As you can recall earlier, I was talking about Charlottesville, 2017. Something else happened in 2017. Well, just a few weeks before the Unite the Right rally, Harold visited Craigslist. And you may be asking yourself, what what did he want on Craigslist? Is is it a couch? Is it new gym socks? Is it new gym equipment? Well, before I dive into that, there's something I would really like to talk about. That is the health of my good friend Patricia. See, I've been looking through Patricia's health documents. I, I like to read. And what I am reading here is an evaluation from when she was six to seven weeks pregnant. Let's see what, uh, what issue she could possibly have. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Her mother has Graves' disease. Ooh, that's kind of rough. Also, Patricia drinks a lot of soda. That's kind of scary for a baby. And F-O-B has H-I-V. But I'm not a doctor. Can we possibly find out what FOB means? It sounds like it sounds like a person. Honestly, let's you know, let's ask Google. It would know better than I do. I'm not in the medical field. FOB stands for Father of the Baby. Hmm. It is an abbreviation used in medical records to refer to the father of a pregnant patient. Interesting. I mean it's not like, I don't know, having HIV AIDS and hooking up with people without telling them is a crime and a certain someone is saying that they're freshly tested. Hmm. Interesting. Really gets the noggin joggin. I wanted to read, uh... A text message from our boy Harold mainly just this excerpt and I'm also working with attorneys regarding you telling people I have AIDS that is going to cause major legal trouble for you now there are two points that I want to address with this I think that he thinks that HIPAA applies to everyone it does not it actually applies to Healthcare providers, doctors, hospitals, clinics, chiropractors, nursing homes, basically people who do this for a living. But out of the people that this does not apply to, and it's a pretty long list, would be schools, school districts, auto insurance companies, employers. You'll need to know that part in a little bit. And you may be asking yourself how would someone allegedly 
have HIV AIDS, a straight man, how would they, how would that happen? Well, we need to jump back to 2017. So during the era of the Unite the Right rally, allegedly, this is uh, something that he said to a couple of different people, I'm not going to name them, uh, John Smith and, and John Smith and then there was Jane Smith and then Jane Smith actually that was her name while he is doing his white supremacy thing he's in full swing he's meeting David Duke he's also meeting two black guys in a hotel room that he is paying that he uh, solicited from Craigslist to enter him at the same time which I <laughs> which honestly it just sounds like a skit from the whitest kids you know now I'm going to jump back and I'm sorry for the back and forth but I I felt like I was I felt like you all deserved for me to paint a vivid picture now I'm going to jump back into the messages that he sent Russell where he is talking about a video that is being made about his children the video that he is referring to is the one that you're watching right now. During the course of me deciding that I was going to make this video and do research about him, he found out. And that's because I announced it publicly. I didn't hide it from anyone. I wasn't secretive. So what he messaged me and said is, Do not post about me anywhere or I will be suing you. I am not kidding. So I did what any person would do. That is threatened by a lol cow to be taken to court and i released the trailer for this video he of course makes a, another facebook account to comment on the trailer that i released on facebook um he writes about 50 odd comments but i was busy like making dinner blah blah, blah. i seen him i couldn't really screenshot them i was busy and so I messaged him because he deleted all of them. I said, uh, you deleted a bunch of comments on my post. I wonder why that is. Because I don't want to bother with this anymore. I would have deleted that last one, but you started that comment subthread. Within these comments, and I don't have them, uh, basically he said that like Patricia broke her own thumbnails and gave herself black eyes and basically said like everything that happened, she did to herself, essentially. Now, this may seem like silly little details for me to get into, but I'm going to read one of the comments that he did not delete. Andrew Riggs, I honestly don't give a fuck what these weirdos say. They hold no actual, no weight in actual reality. Bunch of Facebook nobodies. Your obsession with me is weird. Good luck with your comedy career associating with Sam Hyde and these clowns. I will explain why I just read that comment, but first, I need to read you something else. The first would be this lovely screenshot from Megan, that is Harold's current girlfriend. I wonder if that Twitter page is still interested in writing that slam piece on you. I'm sure they would love all this. Also, here's an email that I would like to read for you. Good day. I'm Jane, a journalist with the Hate Watch group from the Southern Poverty Law Center. We are writing a new article called Women of the White Nationalist Party and where they are now. Now the first issue that I noticed with this email when it was forwarded to me is the email address. The email address is jane.splc at outlook.com. Now if you've ever worked for a company, you would know that if a person named Jane is working for SPLC, which is a law practice, it would say Jane at SPLcenter.org. I don't know, seems kind of weird, but let's get into another email that I feel that you all should read, or that I should read to you all. Sorry, been talking a lot today. Hi there. Kelly here from the Hate Watch group. We are a group out of the Southern Poverty Law Center. Currently, we are war working on an article about what neo-Nazis look like in 2024. One of our current subjects is this. in this article is a man named Andrew Riggs. 
It has come to our attention that Mr. Riggs regularly performs at your establishment with a comedy group, Bricky's Comedy Club. Is this establishment aware of Mr. Riggs' ties to the neo-Nazi organization? Across Mr. Riggs' multiple Facebook pages, you can see his ties to many Nazi organizations and Sam Hyde. I known neo-Nazi. Hmm. Along with any pictures of past KKK Grand Wizards and Hitler himself. <laughs> Singing their praises. Does your club have a quote about these behaviors from Mr. Riggs? Is this the type of racist and anti-Semitic comedy that regularly happens at this brewery? Currently, the American Jewish Committee is looking into sending out a representative for tonight's show in order to get a direct quote on this matter and educate your owners on anti-Semitism. In today's world, being known for hosting racist and anti-Semitic performers is highly problematic. We would like to be able to keep your company out of this article. If you have cut ties with Mr. Riggs or the comedy group, please let us know ASAP and we can keep your company out of the article or anonymous. Thanks for your time. Hmm. I wonder what email address this comes from. Surely it's the Southern Poverty Law Center. Why would it, why would it not be? It is from Kelly360774 at gmail.com. Well, Kelly, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, air quotes. Kelly, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm, I'm mixed. I'm mixed race. I can't, I can't. I can't join the neo-Nazi organization. I don't know what is, I don't know what that is. But, like, also, there's no pictures. There's, like, there's no videos. There's no screenshots. There's, what is, what is this? Also, isn't it weird that three days apart, two people are messaging me or are messaging people about Andrew Riggs, his comedy career, and Sam Hyde. Really, really gets the noggin joggin'. Really makes you think. It makes you think... Harold. Now, there are a few messages he has sent me since all this happened. Essentially begging me to not make this documentary about him to, quote, leave me alone and let me heal. The reality of the situation is I don't want to spend any more time on this than is absolutely necessary. Um, I do have enough stuff for a part two, but hopefully, hopefully I don't have to make one. I guess this is the part of the video where I address Harold because I can almost guarantee that he is watching and then we're gonna then we're gonna wrap this thing up with a super special treat for everybody that's watching from home Harold I gave you a chance to kinda come clean and what happened is you lied to me and now you're trying to start a harassment campaign against me because I'm willing to speak out against you You've already done the fake TikTok accounts with Trish. You're obviously, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really take a genius to figure out that you're sending out fake emails to comedy clubs. Brother, get your life together. You can whine on social media about how, oh, the... The women, they took everything from me. I'm a poor victim. The problem with you is that you switch back and forth between being, oh, poor me, I'm just a poor victim. I can never do anything to everyone. When you're not in a position of power and then sending threats when you are in a position of power. 
you're sending me messages about you know taking me to court suing me for defamation for libel for slander there's nothing in here that's not backed up by some sort of document by by your own words your children will look at you when they are older as a perfect example of who not to be you have failed your children in an immeasurable way now the video is about to be done Harold you can tune out of this part but for everyone else if you will look below the video go ahead and click open that little little, <laughs> little description section you will see a GoFundMe that that is right for just one dollar you can be a better father than this guy I know I know it's a high bar and you're probably like well I, I didn't know it was possible but if you have it please donate a dollar it will be one more dollar than Harold has spent on any of his children this year all right well uh that's uh that's it thank you for joining me in my walk through this nightmare and um now i guess let's roll through every piece of evidence i gathered we'll uh we'll do it slowly like subscribe donate a dollar to be a better father than harold goodbye